Are you ready, folks, for your daily dose of what the crazies are up to? Because today we're talking about Scream, and we're not talking about the movie Scream. We're talking about people getting together at a game developer conference to scream together into the heavens that they don't believe in in the first place. Yeah. Yeah, it's Bizarro World. It's Nutville. And we're going to take a short journey there, but I promise you will come back laughing, happy, and most importantly, still sane, unlike these people. Hello, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome back to the Pro Channel. As always, it is a pleasure, truly, when you spend your time with us, we consider it an absolute honor. Thank you. Today, we're talking about some people out there who need some adjustments. They need to find something better to do because gathering one and all to scream together in unison, well, that's how you find your way into the chair with a psychiatrist on the other end. At least that's what used to happen. But today, today it's just publicity to gather together and shout, shout all at once and scare everybody around you because they know you're a nut. At least that's what the world used to think five minutes ago. But this, of course, is a brave new world in the worst of ways. Today, folks, we're going to share with you with humor, with joy, how Elon Musk is taking on these crazies. Get ready. Here we go. This is an article from John Trent. Who's that? It says, report over 50 game developers took part in an organized scream at the Game Developers Conference. Now, folks, this is related to what's going on with Elon Musk and uh, Sweet Baby Inc. and all that. But I just want to read you this article. This is, this is breaking and it's fantastic. A report claims that over 50 game developers attending the Game Developers Conference took part in an organized public scream. According to IGN's Rebecca Valentine, this organized public scream was called GD Scream. It was organized by Scott John Siegel and Carol Shaw and took place in the middle of the Yerba Buena Gardens. Siegel informed Valentine that the purpose of the scream was to have a moment of good, of feeling good. I know screaming makes me feel good. A moment of camaraderie. Nothing says, hey, let's be a family like screaming at one another. And a moment of just fully acknowledging how messed up everything is and acknowledging that we're all here at this event pretending everything is fine, which is what I do when I'm screaming. It can't be a constant topic of conversation, but it feels like there needs to be just one moment of just letting it out for some stupid, ridiculous public reason. That's what this is all about, folks. It's about attention. You don't get together and do a unified scream with a bunch of strangers unless you are profoundly narcissistic. Well, let's continue the journey as we make our way to the Elon Musk portion of this first story. And that is that Kotaku editor-in-chief Jen Glennon has resigned. That's right, folks. If you thought the Sweet Baby Inc. story was going away, if you thought that the Sweet Baby Inc. controversy was going to be won by the Wokies, well, it's no joke that they have indeed. Yet again, I know, I know it's cliche, gone broke. And this is with the Kotaku editor-in-chief now. Uh, Jen Glennon announced she resigned from the website a little over two weeks after the outlets. Alyssa, how do we pronounce this one? Uh, John, is this Mercante or Mercante or, or Mercat? I've been saying Mercanti, Mercante. Mercanti, we'll go with it. Lied about video game consultant company Sweet Baby Inc. Glennon posted on X some personal news. I've resigned from Kutaku and Jim Spanfeller is an herb. Well, sounds delicious. All right, he is the CEO of GO Media, the company that owns Kotaku. As for Glennon calling him an herb, it's a derogatory term that means worthy of being mocked. I always do that at my herb garden. I think they grow better that way. You know, you just get out there and you you look at uh, you look at the parsley and just say, "You're stupid, you dumb piece of parsley. Take that, nutmeg." Weak, chumpish, and generally to be avoided, according to the Urban Dictionary. They're taking this well. She's taking. I've never it heard of that term before. An herb. I mean, are you, are, one, do you not scream at your herb garden in the in the uh, greenhouse, guys? Is this not no. normal? No. If if, no. if you actually scream at your herbs, then you need to talk to somebody or probably be institutionalized <laughs> or something. Maybe it takes a few pills and all of that, and you may be good to go. Maybe you know. I I I just thought it was an interesting thing to make personal attacks, epithets against your cilantro. But who knows? Continuing along with the destruction of the video game industry, folks. Elon Musk reacts to Leslie Headland describing the Acolyte as lesbian fan fiction with a Star Wars veneer. Now, how does this connect? Well, Elon Musk, folks, has been on absolute fire taking on the absolute abject wokeness that is 
uh, consuming the Western world, at least on the margins. So Elon has weighed in on uh, Leslie Headland and the Acolyte. This was actually the video that we did this morning on the WDW Pro channel. If you've not seen it yet, boy, oh boy, are you missing something. Um, apparently, Leslie Headland based the Acolyte on Frozen, a alphabet version of Frozen. And Kill Bill. That Frozen is. Yeah. yeah. Let it sink in, folks. Let it sink in. It's, uh, it's Frozen in Space. Um, so anyway, uh, this is, uh, this is Elon Musk re retorting back to that. And we thank him for that because, um, that was a signal boost like you've never seen for the channel when Elon Musk, uh, picked the same topic. We, and, uh, that went well. Something that's not going well though, Elon Musk weighing in again on Sweet Baby Inc. This is the story. He says, Sweet Baby Inc. Remember, this has already caused Kotaku editor in chief to resign. It's already caused them to gather together for a unified scream. Well, Elon Musk says that uh, Sweet Baby Inc. is an evil blight on the gaming industry. Maybe that's why all 50 of them, out of thousands, by the way, thousands, 50, they got 50 out of thousands. That's not a great percentage. Maybe that's why 50 nut jobs got together to scream to the heavens that they don't believe in. Elon Musk declared Sweet Baby Inc. as an evil blight on the gaming industry after one of the company's employees, Chris Kindred, attempted to cancel Asmongold. After it was announced, he was turned into an official pawn by Capcom for Dragon's Dogma 2. Gotta get that gate. Gotta keep the gate. Be a gatekeeper. Don't let Asmund go through. Don't let him get official connections with companies. Not allowed. He's bad. He's bad. He's white. He's straight. Look at him. Pasty. The official Dragon's Dogma account announced Drag uh, Asmund Gold, along with a number of other YouTubers and streamers, would be available as official pawns in the game in a post to X on March 15th. You guys get the idea. That was not allowed. In Dragon's Dogma 2, players are taking on the role of a customizable character called the Arisen. He goes on to talk about exactly what those are. The developer also shared specializers are a new unique feature of pawns. The ability to translate Elvish is one of many specializations. So Asmongold got some perks. And then they didn't like that. Sweet Baby Inc. employee Chris Kindred reacted to this announcement that Asmongold was one of the official pawns by accusing him of engaging in harassment. Kindred wrote, that's crazy. Isn't one of these people an active participant in a harassment campaign? Clearly trying to get the major gaming company to drop Asmongold because he disagrees with it. Folks, it's a fantastic article, but here's where it arrives for the purposes of this live stream. Elon Musk weighs in yet again. Uh, not only did he weigh in with the Acolyte, but Elon Musk says, Sweet Baby Inc. is an evil blight on the gaming industry. All they do, all they do is make games terrible and try to cancel people. They cannot go broke soon enough. Boy, what a spotlight to be shown upon them. Matt, give us a rundown of what you think is going on with Sweet Baby Inc. And do you think that the, the backlash is winning? Oh, the, the, the backlash is definitely winning. I want to say that Elon Musk is swimming in YouTubers' wake like WDW Pro. And in a good way, not not to say that him uh, mentioning all of this and uh, making huge waves in the media isn't a bad thing. But uh, I just I I uh, I think that he uh, he really he really is concerned about the woke mind virus infecting America's youth because he has children. This is, comes from a real place and everyone has a child and they're always concerned if video games are doing more harm than good. And I think in this case, we see that they can do tremendous harm. And um, I just, uh, I hope that he continues to follow the great work like at that park place. And, uh, and I, we're in this for the long haul. Video games are too profitable for corporations of America and the world not to stop trying to manipulate the world's youth into largely constantly engaging with the video game of today. They're completely different. Like when I was young, it's all about engagement. And so, um, yeah, big picture way to go. Elon Musk. Thank you so much. Hughes, I've got a theory, and Matt, great comments. Hughes, my, my thought here is that Elon Musk is the kind of man who wants to take 
uh, humans to Mars. He wants to land rockets. He wants to uh, have a boring company that isn't boring, but rather it is boring under the ground. He is a man on a mission to make massive technological advancements. He is, in my estimation, the only positive thing inside the EV market, and yet they hate him ever more. Uh, but Hughes, I think the reason that Elon Musk is weighing in on these kinds of issues, such as Sweet Baby and Leslie Headland, and, and maybe perhaps he is a reader of That Park Place at this point. Uh, I would say the minority of people out there are not readers of That Park Place. Uh, welcome to the majority, folks. But I think that Elon Musk is weighing in because he sees the woke mind virus as being so bad that it could actually be a deterrent for the future of humanity. Hughes, is that the way you assess this? Have, has the woke gone so far at this point that they actually endanger society? I mean, that should have been a question asked about five or, five or six years ago. I mean, obviously, it was worse than it is now and everything, but it's just right now, they're panicking even harder because of the simple fact that, you know, they see that they're losing. It's an uphill battle for them to the point where now they're going to go ahead and dig their own graves and stuff. Everybody forgets that Elon Musk is a gamer. Okay, this dude is a gamer. What do you think he was doing when he was in college? He was gaming, okay, while studying and letting his big mind grow even further and stuff. But the, the point is, at the, at the end of the day, he's not just a businessman, he's not just a father, he's also a gamer. Well, I think, he's, I think, more in tune, he's more in tune with America than, than yes, Dave. he's more oh, in tune no with doubt. America than the Walt Disney Company or Kathleen Kennedy or Bob Iger. He's just more no in doubt. tune. He, he is a billionaire, but. He has common sense. He can read a newspaper, read the internet, watch YouTube, watch Views with Hughes. Who says he's not watching Views with Hughes? I, I well, suggest he does. Everybody out there, subscribe to Views with Hughes if you're not. But we all see it, don't we? We all see it. The average folk in the audience. No one has to be an expert. But go ahead, bro. Go ahead. Well, what I, what I was going to say is you're exactly, both of you are exactly right. Mm -hmm. And this is why we have made this analogy so many times on the channel. And it connects with people. People truly feel this when we say it. Think about it. And, and some of you out there, this is your first time ever joining the show and seeing what this is about. Um, just think this way. Are you more like the former personal assistant to one Mr. Weinstein, Leslie Headland? who is now running the Acolyte, the showrunner, writer, director, what have you, or are you more like Gina Carano? And you see how these companies treat Gina Carano, and you see how they esteem Leslie Headland. So how would they treat you? And I'm here to tell you, you're the majority. You're the sensible center. You are easily the majority on this. I want to go to John, though. John, you every day are taking on the woke mind virus, right? which is a quasi-religious belief system. Otherwise, how do you get people coming together in unison to scream together at a conference in public, right? Let's remember this, folks. This is, this is real. This is the article. Over 50 game developers took part in an organized scream, all right? That's some sort of bizarre religious ritual. People who, it's visit, not a good one. People who visit nature preserves, they love it when people come in and start screaming. <laughs> It's awesome. The plants love it. The animals love it. It's so considerate. Go ahead, yeah. John. Well, and then when you insult people with botanical terms, calling them herbs, totally. Yerba buena, it's the good herbs in Spanish. I, I, I want right. to go there now, but not John, Spanish. John, as, as someone who takes on the woke every day, what is so nefarious about wokeism? I, I, you're you're going to love this. John, what is so nefarious about wokeism? I see the gears ready to go. What's so nefarious about wokeism? The world's richest man and foremost technical uh, leader, the the uh, Tony Stark in real life, that he feels he has to fight against it now. Well, at the end of the day, it's I think you were kind of right when you posited as anti-human that the whole ideology that it revolves around is about just is about destruction um, and, and death. It's about taking someone and um, destroying them. If you're looking at it from like that, the kind of uh, transgender ideology if you look at it from like the the feminist ideology part of it it's it's a denigration of, of men for the most part um i mean there's numerous like webs of this spider but at the end of the day when you look at all of these things it's all about uh destruction and trying to uh destroy people with no with no I mean, redemptive obviously that's a huge too yeah, with no obviously this is like a huge massive question, but I think just to kind of simplify it, it's it, the reason why it's so evil is it tries to destroy you. See, I think I think the reason it's so evil is because it's anti-truth. Like 
they they either don't believe in the truth or they believe that the truth is is subjugated to power and the and, narrative is what matters right right i mean if you actually believed in the truth you wouldn't be trying to just to destroy it right um or, or and destroy other people so uh, i that's obviously part of it right i mean uh, there's a really good uh, video that um father chris alar actually does on his uh, on his channel called um what is it? divine mercy he actually has a really good breakdown of why why woke is so bad i mean i think he he lays it out really good it's about a, like seven it's about a half an hour video but the first 17 minutes is where he's really dealing with that and um he says it the best uh, i i'm actually gonna i have it saved as a reference to cite in a cite in upcoming articles and things like that but um he basically shows that it's it, it, it is truly anti-truth it's, it's it's anti uh beauty it is pro-destruction it's pro-death uh, that is really why uh, the ideology is so evil. And folks, we have come to the end of this zany, crazy video. Boy, it was a good time, though, because we like to laugh. What else are you going to do when people act this way, right? You just have to walk away with a smile on your face and go, you know what? Some people, they just got a different way of approaching life. And I don't want to be a part of it. I want to do things that build up others and build myself up. I don't have time for getting together to scream in unison like a like a temper tantrum from toddlers all combined together. Boy, what a horrible place it would be if we all acted that way. Glad you all out there are the builders of great things, not the destroyers, the venters, the angry, the angstful. Folks, you can help build us. Build us up by clicking the like button. Share, subscribe, click it, stick it to the algorithms. It's the notification bell. Drop a comment down below. Let us know your thoughts. Shout not, though. No all caps. Be kind. Be polite. Pithy and cool. All right, folks. We'll see you real soon. Wherever you are and whatever you're doing, keep learning, keep growing, and keep having fun.